Hundred-year-old auto industry business model is facing unprecedented technological disruption, starting with the very definition of the market itself. A traditional definition goes like this. There are 80 million cars sold each year at an average price of $19,000 per car for a total of $1.5 trillion, or 2% of global GDP. A Silicon Valley definition goes something like this. There are 10 trillion miles traveled annually by the global car population at an average cost of $1 per mile for a total addressable market of $10 trillion, or 13% of global GDP. 10 trillion miles is equal to 1.7 light years, or the distance between the Earth and the Sun 108,000 times. Looking for the next $100 billion market, global mobility is equal to 100 hundred billion dollar markets. To demonstrate these different market definitions, take Toyota, the world's largest, most valuable car company. Toyota sells 10 million cars per year, has a 13 percent market share, and revenues of over 250 billion dollars. Now let's take a ride-sharing firm, the largest of which we estimate has a share of the global miles market of 0.4 percent. Now, just three years ago, we estimate their share was around 0.0%. All right, let's assume this company had a more aggressive medium-term target, say something like 1.7%. At $1.50 per mile, which includes the value of a driver's time, this would translate to $255 billion of gross revenue. It took Toyota more than 70 years to become a $250 billion revenue company. How long do you think it will take a company engaged in the miles business to match Toyota? Not 70 years? Maybe seven? Maybe less? Now, there are many inefficiencies in today's automotive business model, none more obvious than utilization. Cars are used 4% of a day. Now, that's bad enough, but when you consider the passenger occupancy rate is 1.55 and that the average car has five seats, this reveals an available seat mile utilization of barely 1%. We believe shared and autonomous cars can deflate the cost per mile to as little as 20 cents, triggering a double of global miles traveled by the year 2030. Today's 10 trillion vehicle miles achieve an average fuel economy of 20 miles per gallon, consuming around 500 billion gallons of gasoline every year. 500 billion gallons is equivalent to 70 gallons per person on Earth, or accounting for 45% of global oil demand. A privately owned and operated electric vehicle has a payback period of nearly 30 years. But an EV operated in a shared taxi fleet at 100,000 miles annually can yield a payback of less than three years. Now let's turn our attention to the most valuable commodity in the world, your time. The world's 10 trillion vehicle miles are driven at an average speed of around 25 miles per hour, revealing 400 billion vehicle hours, and if we include passengers, over 600 billion hours. For perspective, 600 billion hours is 68 million years. 68 million years ago puts us back into the late Cretaceous period at the end of the Mesozoic era, the height of the dinosaurs, the earth looked like this. Bees started to exist around this time. Bees. Now what's an hour of time worth? Well, global GDP per capita per waking hour is $1.80. But when isolating the relatively fortunate 1 billion car owners on earth, our economists came out with a number closer to $10 per hour. Go ahead and apply whatever nominal dollar value you want. 600 billion hours times anything is going to get you a very large number. Now let's talk about safety. In the year 2015, the number of people in the U.S. who died in traffic-related accidents was 36,000, or nearly 100 deaths per day. Car accidents are the number one cause of death of young people in the United States. And after a long period of decline, the numbers are growing, up around 8% last year. NHTSA attributes the spike to driver distraction. It seems the only thing rivaling the pace of machine learning is the pace of human unlearning. Globally, the statistics are far worse. The World Health Organization estimates 1.3 million people die each year in car accidents. That's 3,500 deaths per day.
We expect the empirical safety record of autonomous cars to surface with great urgency, at first demonstrated through public-private partnerships in the hyper-localized environments of our cities. Initial applications will take the form of small fleets, less than 25 miles per hour, fully autonomous, fully electric, and geographically limited to as little as one square mile. We see the rollout of shared autonomous electric transport as not unlike the development of the transcontinental railroad or the electric utility grid in the mid and late 19th century when names like Theodore Judah and Thomas Edison were engaged in a city-by-city -city transformation with a profound impact on U.S. and global GDP. Now, while it may take decades to complete, we see the auto industry morphing into a public transport utility that is highly automated, highly regulated, and where the transport service itself is hyper-commoditized. We see the greatest value in the content and data produced and consumed by the 68 million years of collective humanity trapped inside a mobile supercomputing cyborg swarm. This precious time is ripe for liberation and monetization. The industry implications are far-reaching. Auto OEMs and suppliers face new competitors with advantages in software, consumer electronics, and cost of capital, and auto companies may struggle to attract and retain the best talent, all while absorbing the losses as today's business model potentially disappears. Car rental names face pressures from ride-hailing firms that can achieve far higher levels of asset utilization, far larger fleet sizes, better data, and significantly lower costs. Auto dealers may stop selling cars altogether and evolve into a 100% service model in a highly consolidated group of mega fleet managers. We see more than 10,000 car dealer owners consolidating to as few as 10 that really matter. Insurance companies may see their auto business move from a B2C model with a global auto premium of $500 billion, or 70 basis points of global GDP, to a B2B model with a vastly diminished risk pool. Lithium producers confront a chicken and egg problem where higher demand for EVs cannot be met without far greater supply of battery grade lithium, while the lithium supply won't be added until EVs show greater end market demand. Electric utilities. The U.S. car park consumes around 1,200 terawatt hours of equivalent electrical energy each year. That's around 1 billion tons of TNT, or an energy equivalent of 60,000 World War II-era atomic bombs, equal to one-third of total U.S. electricity demand. Energy. The 500 billion gallons of fossil fuel consumed by the global auto fleet is worth around $1.5 trillion. What if, say, 50% of miles traveled moved to electric propulsion over the next 20 or 30 years? Does Saudi take a 30-year view? Tech hardware, software, and internet. 600 billion hours is an awful lot of time spent trapped inside a car that you're not actually driving. Some firms are uniquely positioned to monetize the content and data opportunities. Apple may want to turn your car into a mobile Apple store. Semiconductors. Autonomous driving replaces the human brain with compute power, deep learning, and artificial intelligence, creating significant growth opportunities for microprocessors. Now, we all know that drinking and driving don't mix, but there's still 1.2 million DUI arrests in the United States every year. The average American drinker consumes 14 drinks per week. Over the course of a year, how many more drinks would you have if you were completely freed from the responsibility of driving? And how many lives could be saved? Airlines. So you want to take a trip from L.A. to Vegas for the weekend? What if you and your mates could do that on demand in a comfortable, heavily automated car in three hours door-to-door -door for 50 bucks a seat? Still want to stand in that TSA line? Real estate. There are one billion cars on Earth with roughly four parking spots for every car. 300 square feet per parking spot, including egress, implies the world's combined area of parking spaces is 43,000 square miles. That's equal to the area of Lake Michigan. Twice. It's equal to 141 New York cities. Yes, all five boroughs. Okay, that's 1,886 Manhattans. How much commercial or residential real estate needs repurposing or revaluation? 
We find the story of reinventing automobile transport elegantly overlaps with sustainable and responsible investing, unlocking multi-trillion dollar market opportunities through new technologies and new business models directly addresses problems related to finite resource consumption, emissions, public health, and safety. Now, while these themes may be long-term in nature, we'd strongly argue you cannot be too early in understanding the investment implications today.